One of the core tenets of SEO is keyword research. This is the process of finding out what keywords or phrases people are searching for on Google, and then deciding which of these keywords you want your site to rank for. In this video, I'm gonna walk you through a step-by-step -step process for creating a list of target keywords for your website using SEMrush. To be a bit more specific, we're gonna be exploring these tools. And at the very end, I will also share a secret SEMrush tip that can help convince your boss or client of the value that you provide. It might even get you promoted, you never know. By the way, most of the strategies I will share in this video, you can do for absolutely free with a SEMrush account. Click on the link below to learn more. Okay, let's get to it. Let's imagine that you started your own brand of all natural, organic pet food and toys. You built this beautiful website and you want it to show up on Google search results. The first step in this process actually has absolutely nothing to do with keyword research or SEMrush or any of this like fancy SEO terminology. It's all about really understanding your customer. So sit down, get comfortable, Close your eyes even, if you want. You can think about the type of stuff that your target customer might be entering into that little Google search bar. Now, when you're thinking of these terms, you definitely want to focus on relevant stuff. After all, you're running an online store that sells all natural organic pet food and toys. So keywords such as dog food, cat litter, and maybe even fish toys can be relevant to your business. Your target customers might also be interested in stuff like iPhones or maybe flights to Hawaii, like something I'm interested in. But these keywords don't matter to you at all because they're not relevant to the business that you're running right now, which is pet stuff. Let's say you want your website to show up when people search for pet supplies. Great, this is a super relevant keyword. Let's now go to SEMrush to learn more about it and start building a keyword list. In the keyword research toolkit, let's navigate to keyword overview and I'm gonna go ahead and type in pet supplies. This is the keyword that we want to rank for. Now, this entire process of keyword research is all about finding good keywords for each page on your website. So in addition to relevance, which only you know, because you're the business owner, there are three other criteria that you should use to define what good keywords are. The first is search volume, or very plainly, how many people are searching for a given keyword. In this case, you can see that 49,500 people are searching for pet supplies every month in the United States and 72,500 people globally. So if you were to rank number one for this keyword in the United States, you would get thousands of visitors to your website, which is what we want, right? <laughs> now, search volume alone doesn't make this a good keyword. We also need to look at other factors like difficulty. Difficulty is how hard it is to rank for that keyword. SEMrush's keyword difficulty metric is the most accurate in the market, actually. It considers things like authority score, top ranking URLs and keyword search volume, and the presence of SERP features. SEMrush displays keyword difficulty on a scale of one to 100. The higher the keyword difficulty, the harder it's gonna be for you to rank for that keyword. Now, this keyword we're looking at has a difficulty of 99%, which sucks. So if you're a small business just starting out, you probably won't be able to rank for this keyword unless you create an amazing web page with high authority, a bunch of backlinks, and a bunch of stuff that we're gonna discuss later. The next thing to consider is intent. Search intent tells you what people are actually trying to accomplish when they search for a keyword. Keywords can be categorized into four main types of search intent. Navigational, informational, commercial, and transactional. In this case, the search intent for pet supplies is both navigational and commercial. Navigational keywords are used by people trying to go to a specific website or page. Like when your grandma types something in like Amazon website or amazon.com into Google instead of going directly to the site. I know mine does that all the time. Commercial keywords are used by people looking for information related to potential purchases. So they're quite valuable for us. Commercial keywords can be something like puppy training products or dog food reviews. The other two types of keywords are informational keywords and transactional keywords. Informational keywords are 
just what they sound like. They are keywords that people are using to get information or conduct a general research unrelated to a purchase. So for example, how to train a puppy is an informational keyword or biggest dog breeds is informational. Transactional keywords, these are the money keywords, are even closer to a purchase. They're used by people who are actively shopping, like looking to run their credit card. So they're pretty much ready to buy right now. A couple examples of transactional keywords would be something like bulk puppy pee pads or buy organic dog food. Now, lots of keywords are kind of in between these categories. So they blur the lines of search intent, but it's very essential to think about these categories because they help you understand how valuable the keywords might be for your business. So if you're running a store of all natural pet products, someone searching for a transactional keyword like buy organic dog food is a lot more likely to buy from you than someone searching for an informational keyword like how to train a puppy. That said, Informational keywords can still be really valuable. If someone, for example, reads an article on your blog about how to train a puppy and it's filled with great tips, they are much more likely to trust you and your brand to buy from you in the future. That's kind of how content marketing works, by the way. We'll get to that. So back to our keyword here, pet supplies. Should we add it to our list of target keywords or not? My answer is we should not. This keyword has very strong traffic, but we're a shiny new website and we will probably never rank for a keyword with a difficulty score of 99. So how do you find other keywords that could be a better fit? SEMrush has some great tools for this. First, you can keep on using the keyword overview tool and research keywords one by one. Like if I go in here and search for organic pet supplies, suddenly I see that this keyword has a much lower search volume, but also much lower competition. So you could do this one by one for all the relevant keywords that you can think of. Or we can take some shortcuts such as spying on your competitors. This is the domain overview tool. In our case, Chewy.com would be a competitor. So we're going to add it here and see. We now have a lot of information about this competitor. We can see how many organic search visits Chewy.com gets per month and how their organic traffic has trended over time. On the left, we can also see a breakdown by country. Clearly, Americans love their organic dog treats. Let's click here to check out the keywords Chewy.com is ranking for in the US. This takes us to another report, the Organic Research Report. Scrolling down, we quickly notice that almost this entire first page is full of branded keywords. Branded keywords are keywords that contain the Chewy brand name, like Chewy Login or Chewy Dog Food. Most of these are navigational. People are just trying to navigate to specific pages on the Chewy site. So this is actually not great for us because it's not relevant. Also, many of these keywords have super high difficulty, which is also not great for us. We are a net new business. So what we can do here is filter for different parameters, such as keyword difficulty or KD. That's not kill death ratio, by the way. Since we have a brand new website, we're not going to rank for any difficult keywords. So let's set the range from zero to 49. Now, this is a lot better in terms of keyword difficulty, but there are still some irrelevant keywords on this list, as you can see. So we can add an advanced filter to only include keywords that include the words organic and the word dog. Now we have a much shorter but a much more relevant list of keywords. Organic dog treats, for example, is a great keyword. It's relevant, it has commercial search intent, decent search volume, and a low keyword difficulty. I'm gonna create a new list called organic dog and add this keyword to it. Ta-da, so on and so forth. You will slowly build out a list which you can later access in Keyword Manager. Let's take a look at another tool that you can use for keyword research. This time, the Keyword Magic Tool. This is probably the SEO industry's single favorite keyword research tool. SEMrush has a database of over 25 billion keywords and is updating this data constantly. It's just accurate, which is why people use it. It takes any keyword and gives you a list of similar keywords that you can target. So let's go ahead and add organic dog treats in here. Boom. Just like the other tools, you can now take this list and filter by keyword difficulty, intent, etc. And you can add the new keywords to your existing keyword list. A cool little feature of the Keyword Magic tool is this section on the left. You can click on each of these words to expand your keyword list and add even more ideas. 
Now, let me show you one more keyword research tool. This one is called the Keyword Gap Tool. What's cool about this tool is that you can take your site and compare it to your competitors. So you can see what you rank for versus what they rank for. Okay, back to the Keyword Gap Tool. Since we don't actually have an organic food website for dogs, let's pretend we are Petco.com. This is a large competitor of Chewy.com. When we enter both of these domains into this tool, we can see a really awesome Venn diagram of how much overlap these two companies have in terms of keywords. When you scroll down, you can click on the missing tab and this will show you all the keywords that our competitors are ranking for, but we are not. We meaning Petco. You'll notice most of these have a high keyword difficulty score. But remember, in this scenario, we are Petco, a big and powerful corporation. So we probably could rank for some of these keywords. Okay, so you go through this process and you will gather a long list of keywords for your website. At this point in our journey, I want you to add all the keywords that fit the criteria that we discussed. Keywords that are relevant, that match your intent, that have a low keyword difficulty if you are a small business and as high as possible search volume. Don't overthink it, trust me, just add them to the list. But wait, before I go, I promised that I would show you a little something that might get you promoted. It's back here in the organic research tool. Okay, check out this fun little tidbit. Here, it says that the organic traffic cost for Chewy.com is $6.1 million. Now, as you know, you don't have to pay for organic traffic, which is a huge benefit of SEO. So why does this organic research report show a cost for this traffic? Well, this cost is actually an estimate of how much that traffic would cost if Chewy was actually paying for it via Google search ads. So there, if you're working as an SEO and need to prove the value of the work that you do with actual dollar figures, this is a really good place to start. All I'm saying is that number would look super good on a slide. I just shared a lot of information with you. And if you're still a little bit confused, please don't worry. I know keyword research can be super tricky. I've been there. When I first started learning SEO way back when, I couldn't quite understand the point of all these keywords. Like where do they go and how do I actually make my site rank? We will get there. Follow us and we will walk through this whole thing step by step. In the meantime, ask your burning questions, whether they are general questions about keyword research or SEMrush specific. Put them in the comments and we will do our best to help. That's it for now. See you next time.